Well, good morning. This Tuesday, the fourth day of August 2020, and I want you to know my prayers are with families along the Atlantic coast. Uh, hurricane Isaiah uh, increased once again to a Category 1 hurricane and brushed along the South Carolina, North Carolina, and now the Virginia coastline. And my wife and I have family down near uh, the North Carolina coast. And as far as we know, everyone is safe, but uh, our prayers are with our loved ones as well as others that we know in the North Carolina and Virginia area. Now, for today's devotional commentary, our scripture reading is taken from 2 Kings 22 and 23, and then 2 Chronicles 34 and 35. And I've titled today's devotional commentary, The Hour of Revival Had Passed and It Was Too Late. Now, uh, 2 Kings, as you know, and 2 Chronicles are parallel accounts. In this particular instance, we're near the end of the history of the kings of both Israel and Judah. Israel is already taken away in captivity by the Assyrians, and now uh, Josiah, who was a godly king, a great king, is the king once again. And so God has given Judah a reprieve, an opportunity of turning to him. But as you read the scriptures today, you're going to realize that although Josiah was a godly king and he led a great reformation in Judah, the fact is that the sins of his grandfather Manasseh had so overshadowed the nation and so many of Judah had followed the, the wickedness and the evil of that king that God had already determined that that nation would be judged. Now, just a reminder, 2 Kings is a contemporary history record of the events that happened during the reign of King Josiah, uh, the, uh, the rise, the fall of Assyria, uh, the rise of Babylon towards the end of our study today. And uh, 2 Chronicles, on the other hand, was written during the captivity. And so it is a, a history book, a recollection of those things that are recorded in 2 Kings. Now, our devotional then today is taken to, from 2 Kings 22, 2 Kings 23, and I would like to share that with you. Now, the glorious reign of Josiah, the grandson of King Manasseh, who reigned in Judah 55 years, and uh, Josiah was the son of Ammon. Now, Ammon was a wicked king. He only reigned two years before he was assassinated by his own servants. Josiah became a king when he was only eight years old. And perhaps it was the influence of his mother that he chose to do that which was right in the sight of God, that he walked in all the ways of, of David his father, and he turned not aside to either the right hand or to the left hand, 2 Kings 22 and verse 2. Now the king immediately commanded that the temple be repaired. And during the course of repairing the temple, it's, it's hard to grasp this, but the high priest Hilkiah actually found, and I quote, the book of the law in the house of the Lord. Can you imagine being so far from God that not only do you not read the word of God and the law and the commandments, but you've actually displaced them, and that is the way it was. Now, this book of the law was taken to King Josiah. And when the words of that book were read, and they may have been Deuteronomy, might have been Leviticus, might have been both of those books, but when the king heard the blessings and the cursings that were found in the book of the law, 2 Kings 22, verse 11, we read that he rent his clothes in a public act of repentance and humility. Josiah was overwhelmed by the words of the law and its promises of blessings and cursings. And he sent messengers to inquire of a prophetess named Huldah. Now, I don't know why Huldah and not Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a contemporary of Josiah. But it might have been that Jeremiah was not readily available uh, to consult with the king. And so this prophetess, of whom we know really no more, was consulted. And she confirmed Josiah's fears that the sins of Judah had sealed the nation's fate and judgment was imminent. Josiah was assured that in his lifetime he would not see the destruction of, of Judah nor the destruction of Jerusalem because his heart was 
tender. And he had humbled himself before the Lord. Now, 2 Kings 23 continues that record of history. Having learned the imminence of God's judgment, Josiah set his heart to begin a national reformation in Judah. And it was a reformation that reached ultimately all the way up into Israel, the northern ten tribes, 2 Kings 23, we find that there. And Josiah then, having heard the judgment that would follow, gathered all the leaders, all the people of Judah, and he established and renewed God's covenant with the Lord between God's people and the Lord. Now the king commanded that the temple be cleansed from all of its idolatry. All the elements of wickedness were to be destroyed. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Kings 23, 4-6, that they were to be ground to powder. And all those elements of idolatry were to be burned. But demonstrating the depth of depravity to which Judah had descended, we read these words in 2 Kings 23 and verse 7, that there were houses of the Sodomites, that is homosexuals, located on the Temple Mount by the house of the Lord. Mark this down, and America has gone down this trail. Anytime a nation entertains, accepts the depravity of homosexuality, that nation will be judged. And we're facing that. I believe America is in the crisis that we're in because we have shed the blood of innocent, unborn children. We have, have accommodated and even applauded homosexuality. We have destroyed the family, and we are guilty before God. Josiah also observed the Passover. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings 23, verses 21 through 23, that he instituted the Passover and observed it in a way that had not been seen since the days of the judges. What a great king, this Josiah. Oh, that America had such a man today. The reign of Josiah was celebrated in Judah. In the annals of Judah's history, there was, and I read 2 Kings 23, verse 25, there was no king before him that turned to the Lord with all of his heart, with all of his soul, and with all of his might, according to the law of Moses. There was no king before him. There was no king after him like Josiah. And yet, I need to close. It was too late for Judah. The wickedness of the king Manasseh, Josiah's grandfather, the people's willingness to follow the sins of Manasseh, had sealed the fate of that nation. Second Kings 23 and verse 27 we read, And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel. Israel already taken into captivity. And the Lord goes on to say, And I will cast off this city of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. And even the house, the temple itself, would be destroyed, because my name shall be there. There were three rebellious kings that followed the death of Josiah who was killed in battle against Pharaoh of Egypt. And those kings were just as evil and as wicked as Manasseh. We see as I close the rising of a king whose name is Nebuchadnezzar and his presence begins to overshadow all the world of that day. For Judah the hour of revival had passed and it was too late. We read in Genesis 6 and verse 3 and I close, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. My dear friend, do not trifle with God. He is a God who is holy and He is a God who will exact judgment. You and I live in a nation that is a wicked nation now. And we cannot escape the consequences of a evil, sinful society. But God is with us. He still hears our prayers. And we are His children. Have a blessed day. I look forward to joining you tomorrow. 
We actually will be turning in our Bibles tomorrow to the book of Zephaniah, a little known Old Testament book, and I hope to see you then. God bless you. Bye-bye.